All right, going forward here, we're going to talk about lots of really complex stuff. Um, don't get too worried that you don't understand it all and that it sounds really complex. Most people watching this video won't understand it all. But the good thing is you don't actually need to understand it all. A big thing you'd be doing is cutting and pasting bits of my code. But to have some level of understanding means you know which bits of my code to cut and paste and why we're doing what we're doing. All right, so just buckle up for the ride. It's, uh, it's going to hurt your head before the end of it. Righto, let's look at exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to work out the exact robot location in the real world based upon seeing one of these markers in the camera image. Now, what we've got to understand about this camera image is it's a 2D representation of a 3D world. The 3D world is projected onto the camera sensor through a lens. So we need to understand exactly how this lens does it and calibrate our software to the lens we are using. So if I go to um, Google lens distortion and I have a look through some of these here, you can see this first image here, you can see how the image is distorted by the lens. Then mathematically, they have done an algorithm to undistort the lens. So come down here a little bit further, I see two pictures here both taken at the same time by the same camera, but they've swapped the lens. One's with a 15 millimeter lens, and that causes stretching around the outside and compression in the center of the image, but it gives you a very deep field of view. Then he switched to an 800 millimeter lens, which doesn't give him very little distortion, but it gives him a very poor depth of view. So everything in the background's out of focus. Scroll down a little bit further. This here is radial distortion. So what happens is because of the camera angle, the top of the child is much closer to the lens than what the feet are, and it causes this distortion here. So they've mathematically, they've undistorted it back to the, what it should really look like. So in order to be able to do this undistortion, so we have a good image, we need to understand or calibrate our software to work out how your particular lens of the camera you're using is doing this distortion. Rightio, let's look at writing some code to calibrate the camera. So I'm gonna start up with SCP so I can edit files on my Raspberry Pi. So I need to put in my IP address, my user Pi, and my password. Hit login. And you'll find on this side of the screen, I get all the files that are on my Raspberry Pi. And on this side of the screen, all the files and directories on my computer. And I can drag and drop from my computer to the Raspberry Pi and from the Raspberry Pi to the computer. And I can also edit the stuff on the Raspberry Pi. So here, if I go right click, and I hit new directory, and I'm going to call it Aruko. And I'm going to come into this Aruko directory and I'm going to create a Python file in here. Now, WinSCP does come with its own text editor, but it's pretty ordinary. So what I've done is I've gone to Options, Preferences, come down here to Editors, and I've changed my editor to Notepad++, which is an editor I like. But you could put a Python IDE in there and put star.py that the Python editor will edit all your Python files, but I'm using Notepad++. So if I go right click now, New File, this time we'll call it Cam underscore cal.py. So camera calibration Python file. Press OK. It opens up here into the um, notepad editor. I'm just going to paste in some pre-made code I already had. Right, this is the basic bare minimum code in order to take images from the camera and display them on the screen in a continual stream. Right, so we need to import our, the modules we need. Then down here, I've actually set up the window of where I'm going to display it. And the reason I've done that is I have a very small screen on my Raspberry Pi and I want it in an exact spot just so it fits well. So I've named the window and then I've moved the window to the exact location I want. This next line down here starts the capturing, sets up where it's going to take the images from. And then I've just set up the resolution and the frame rate. Now I've used 640 by 480 because if we have too high a resolution, 
It takes too long for the Raspberry Pi to process each image and you end up with a low frame rate. If you use too low a resolution, it doesn't give you very accurate position of the robot. So I've tried for 640 by 480 and I've gone for the highest frame rate I can get in that resolution. If I actually have a look here at the specs for the Raspberry Pi camera, what you'll find in the um, V2 module, the new module I have, in 640 by 480, if you go over 40 frames per minute, you only get a partial field of view. And if we scroll down here, it shows you here, you just get a little slot in the center. All right, if I want the full field of view, I can only go to 40 frames per minute. Now, if I actually have a look up here at the V1 um, module, you'll see at 640 by 480, you can actually go up to 90 frames per second with a full field of view. So it actually seems the V1 module was better for frame rates at 640 by 480 than the V2 module. Coming back to here. All right. So then this next line is just setting up in order to work out my frames per second. All right. I go in here into the main loop where I'm going to get frames, display them on the screen and go around. The first line here is actually to read a frame from my capture and it returns the actual image frame and just whether it got one or not. Later on in the center here, this is where we're going to put all our processing code, but we have nothing in there at the moment. These next few lines is just to calculate the frame rate of the display. We just get the new time. Um, what we're going to say is the frame rate is one over the new time minus the old time. And then we're going to set the old time to the new time. And we're just simply going to write it on the image at this location with this font in this color, this size and this line thickness in that type of line. And then down here, we're just gonna say, show that image in this window I've created up the top here on the screen. Down here, we're just gonna ch uh, check to see if a key's being pressed. If, if a key has been pressed and it's Q, we're gonna break out. And we're just gonna come down here that's gonna release the camera and that's gonna re release the windows we created, All right? So it's gonna loop around here until I press Q, taking a frame, calculating the frame rate, writing the frame rate on the frame, and then showing the frame, checking the key, going round and round again. So I'm gonna save this. After I save this, just because I'm trying to record video and operate wirelessly to my Raspberry Pi, I find I can't record video and stay in sync if I have too many things open. So I'm just gonna close my WinSCP you won't need to close, it's just something that I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna then open um, my VNC viewer. And I'm gonna log in, it's just my IP address here. All right. And I get this, so you normally open up like this. We can open up a terminal, Oop, I open two terminals then. So we can change into the recruit the Aruko directory made, CD Aruko. If I actually have a look what's in here, you'll see my cam cal pi. So now if I go Python cam underscore cal dot py dot py, it will run it. And there we go. There I am on the screen there. And you can sort of see the frame rate I'm getting. It bounces around a little bit. That's just because I'm streaming it to my laptop. Once I stop streaming to my laptop and I'm just going directly on the little screen that's attached to it out on the robot, we won't have those laggy bits. So we calibrate the camera by taking lots of shots of a known object like this chessboard and then seeing how it's distorted in the camera image. So first off, we actually need to know the exact size of this checker of each of these checkers on the checkerboard. So what I do is I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and out to here is 10. So that's 10 checkers. So if I measure from one side to the other, it comes out to um, 263 millimeters. So if 10 checkers is 263 millimeters, it means one square must be 26.3 millimeters. Now I need to know that because I need to tell my program that 26.3 millimeters is the size of the square. Now the other thing we need to understand when we're looking for this in the image, it actually doesn't find the squares. What it does is it finds the corners. So although that there's 10 squares across here, there's only 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine corners across and one, two, three, four, five, six. Six corners down. So this is a nine by six checkerboard. And I have printed this out and stuck it down on this board to make sure that it's perfectly flat. So now what we're going to do is we're going to save some images of this checkerboard so we can do some calibration. So I've just added initializing two variables here, um, cal image count, the calibration image count we're up to, and the frame count. And what I'm going to do is in this loop going around here, each time around the loop, I'm going to increase my frame count by one. If frame count gets up to 30, then I'm actually going to save that frame to a file called cal image, add whatever cal count we're up to, and JP, JPG. I'm going to increase my cal image count by one, and I'm going to reset my frame count. So we go round and round and round. Each time it hits 30 frames, it will save one image, and then reset the frame count. Go round and round and round, and it'll do that over and over and over till I press Q. So let's go now to our VNC. I'm going to run him. I'm going to get my board here. What I want to do is, fairly slowly, move my board in, move my board up, and across to each side, and make sure I get the board at some nice angles, and move him around. Move him nice and slow so he doesn't get bad focus. That's what I find. Take him a nice long way away, nice and small, and bring him in nice and close. Always making sure we're getting lots of different angles of the board. Really, really important the board's at all different angles. Oh, I'll press Q. So now that that should have saved a whole heap of images, just go DIR. You can see it saved all those images. So what I'm going to do, so I can have a look at all of them, I'm going to come in here, I'm going to come into the Uruko, and then look at each image. So that image is no good. Let's throw that image away. There's a delete here somewhere. Uh, is that it there? And what's deleted? Yep. That image is nicely in focus. So let's go to the next image. Oop. Here we are, we've opened him up this way. So here, let's go to the next image. That one's blurry, so I'll get rid of that one as well. That one's good. That one's blurry. So it definitely pays to move quite slow. That one's blurry. That one's blurry. Moving too quickly. That one's nice and sharp. It's nice and sharp. Nice and sharp. Nice and sharp. That one's no good. That one looks good, looks good, looks good, looks good, 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 good. So lots of not, oh, that one's no good. Let's get rid of that one. Keep moving on. Oh, that one there. No, he's all right. Sorry, that one there. He's no good, get rid of him. He looks all right, looks all right. Oh, that one's no good. That one looks blurry as well. That one's blurry. That one's definitely a little bit blurry there. That's not too bad, I'll leave him for the moment. It may just look a little bit blurry. I've got plenty of images so I can just pick the good ones. Yeah, I think that's all the way around then. Right, yeah, let's make another file now. And we're going to call him process.py. Right, I'm just going to paste in some pre-made code. 
So the first three lines is just importing the modules we need. The next three lines is the checkerboard. How many corners there are, it's nine wide by six high, and each square is 26.3 millimeters. The termination criteria, I didn't look at this, that's just the cut and paste from um, the default values from the OpenCV docs. The next two lines here is a bit of NumPy magic where we create the uh, NumPy array that holds the real world 3D images of the chessboard, 3D points of the chessboard. Right. The next thing what we're gonna do is we're gonna create two empty lists. One list for holding all the 3D points this ones we just created up here. And another is an empty list to hold all the 2D image points we find in the image, in the images. This next bit here just loads up a list of all the JPG files. And then I'm gonna cycle through each one of them, opening them up, converting them to gray, calling the find chest boards method, which will find it um, in nine by six. Right, if it does find some, what we're going to do is we're going to add to our list of 3D points, another 3D point, and then we're going to refine the, um, the corners in the image. We're going to get sub-pixel values of it, a higher accuracy, and we're also going to add them to the list of our 2D image points. So we'll build up a list of 3D and 2D image points. Right? Then we're actually going to draw it on the image, display the image, wait half a second, then go around and do the next image. So it'll do half a second on each image, displaying it. Once it's gone through all the images, it will close the window and then call this calibration camera method. And we need to pass to it the list of 3D points, the list of 2D points, and it does its magic and it works out the distortion matrix and the um, calibration matrix, all right? These two values here. And we're gonna print them out to the screen, print both the um, calibration matrix and the distortion matrix. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up a file and save them in a file. That means we never need to do the calibration again. For all our future code, we will just open up this, color, this file and read the calibration out of it, all right? So I'll save that. After I've saved it, Make sure it's saved. I'm going to close that down. You don't need to close. I'm only closing because I'm streaming. Um, open up VNC. You'll probably have these permanently open. All right, we're going to come up here. And you can see it just goes through every single image, finding the chess boards, adding them to the list. Once it gets to the end, it's done all of them. We had plenty of them, we should get good accuracy. It takes a while now to go off and do this calibration. So we'll just have to wait a little bit. There we go, there's our calibration matrix and our distortion matrix are saved into a file. So we're ready to actually go off and detect Aruka markers now.